Aloha my little pineapples. We are back. It's Miss Munoz for part two of our story. I am Jane Goodall by Brad Meltzler illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I'll never forget the day, July 16, 1960, the day I first set foot in what is today the Gombe National Park in Tanzania, Africa. At 26 years old, I had finally made it to the home of the chimpanzees. It was a place that would change my life. During one of my first explorations, we saw two chimpanzees eating in a tall tree. They noticed us right away and ran. The next day, we didn't see any chimps. There were no chimps the day after that either. For months, I tried to get close, but they kept running away. Then I started going alone, just me. I go to a high area called the peak and look down with my binoculars. This was my secret. Be patient. Learn about how they lived. Slowly move closer and closer. In time, I saw that the chimpanzees would hang out in groups of six or fewer. The female chimps would be with the children. The male chimps would be with one another. These weren't mindless animals. This was a community. Still, it took nearly a year before I could get within 100 yards of the chimpanzees. One day I came back to camp and found out, one of the male chimpanzees took our food, including your bananas. Fantastic! That means that they're not scared of me now. I bet he'll be back tomorrow. The next day I waited and waited. There were no chimpanzees in sight. Then at 4 p.m., I heard a rustling noise by my tent. It was the large male chimpanzee with a thick beard, David Greybeard. That was the name I had given him. Back then, people told me that there was a certain way to study animals, that I shouldn't give the chimpanzees names. They said animals were supposed to have numbers, not names. Why? They thought animals didn't have personalities or emotions. They thought that if we gave them names, we'd start pretending they were like us. But that's what no one realized. They were like us. That day, David Greybeard took my nuts and my bananas. A month later, he took one from my hand. Even later, out in the forest, he slowly approached me and checked to see if I had a banana in my pocket. It was one of my proudest moments, having the other chimpanzees now understand that I wasn't a threat. I was their friend, and they were mine. Over time, by seeing the chimpanzees as individuals, I could truly understand them. David was calm, though he liked getting what he wanted. Goliath was easily excited. William was shy. Old Flo was a strong mother, always bringing her daughter and son. As I watched, I learned one of the coolest things. One day, I saw David Greybeard stripping leaves from a twig then sticking the twig into a termite mound. He wasn't, just using the tw he wasn't just using the twig as a tool. He had made that tool. Before that, scientists thought that only humans could make tools. There was no doubt now that these animals were intelligent. Every night, I'd write in my journal about what I observed. And every day I saw chimpanzees doing the same thing we do, holding hands, tickling, kissing, even patting backs to reassure each other. The more I observed, the more I learned. Soon I had so much information, I needed a tape recorder. Then I needed an assistant to help observe all the other chimpanzees' families in the forest. Six years later. Later, 
What started with a notepad and binoculars became a full research center. Now I was the one in charge. Isn't it wonderful? Look what we can build together. Today, thanks to our work in the, in the Tanzania, the whole world knows that animals have their own personalities and complex relationships. In my life, people told me there was a certain way to do things, a certain way to study animals, a certain way the girls should behave. They told me to follow the rules. Instead, I followed my gut. In your life, it will be easy to see how others are different from you. But there is so much more to gain if you instead see how alike we all are. All of us, all living things, share so much. We have so many things in common. When we realize that and look out for each other. That's the most beautiful way to live together. Today, Dr. Goodall's work has grown reminding us, pe reminding people everywhere that we all share this earth every day. When we protect the planet, we protect each other. Even now, along with the Jane Goodall Institute, she is working to save endangered species, including her beloved chimpanzees, while also taking care of our environment. With more than 150,000 groups of young people in 130 countries, the Roots and Shoots Network connects youth of all ages who share a desire to create a better world. Give them a call. You can be an environmentalist too. Want to work with animals one day? Watch your favorite animals and see what they do. Make notes and read books about them. They are so much like us. I am Jane Goodall, and I see so much that we have in common. Watch, observe, be patient. I'll teach you this. We don't own this earth. We share it. Listen to the feelings in your heart. You are responsible for the animals around us. We must take care of them. When one of us is in trouble, be it human, creature or nature itself, we must reach out for help. When we do, we build a bridge. A bridge that will carry all of us. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference do you want to make? The end. Okay, friends, thinking rocks are up. Let's think of our four questions. Question number one. Who are the characters in the story? Hmm. Okay, friends. Question number two. Where did the story take place? What was the problem in the story? And last question, how did they solve the problem in the story? I hope you enjoyed today's story. I will be uploading new stories every Monday, Wednesday, and Aloha Friday. So from my friends to you, Aloha!